Did I'm you sorry? did you look up to Super Sentence Man at all? You, the, yeah, I did. Super sure. Sentence Man. We'll make your English great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're very fortunate to have Hermione Lee here in the studio today, filming in the Jungle Cafe with my favorite giraffe back here. Yeah, what's his name or her name? Oh, I don't think I ever came up with a name for Little Gabe. him or her. <laughs> you want to call it Little Gabe? Little Gabe. LG. We had an article featuring Hermione for the November magazine, and she's a very skilled author of several fantasy novels. These are some of her books, just a couple of Hermione's books. Hermione, thank you so much for joining us here. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's my honor to be here. Yeah, hey, you know what? With a name like Hermione, I imagine you're a big fan of Harry Potter. Oh, yes, I am definitely a big fan of Harry Potter. It's more than a fantasy series. When you look closely at it, you see a lot of underlying themes. Harry reminds us that every little boy, or I'll say every child can be a hero. You've written uh, 20 different fantasy novels, uh, at, at least. It's 19? 19 novels. 19 and, fantasy. May I ask how old you are? I'm you're, you're, turning 19 next week. <laughs> you're turning 19. Happy early birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, and by the time this video airs, she will already be 19. <laughs> 19 novels for oh, 19 old, years. Old, old, <laughs> old, old, old. Hey, don't tell me that. A lot of your books have become best sellers. So, what about your books resonates with people? My heroes, they're usually just ordinary people. Maybe my focus on less conspicuous people, bully kids, the protagonists, or the underdogs, or people who are flawed have contributed to this kind of success. Can you tell us a little bit about how you started to develop a love for reading? So when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. um, my mom showed me picture books. These picture books have beautiful illustrations and I got hooked into the story easily. Although mm -hmm. they may not have a very thick and developed plot, they are interesting and that's what matters. I fell in love with these pretty pictures and their stories and I discovered the magic of words, like they could take me to another world. All of a sudden, I'm off traveling. Do you know the poem by Julia McDonaldson? It's called, I opened a book. It says, I opened a book and in I strode. Now nobody can find me. I just built those words. Like I was reading the book and then suddenly I'm in the book. I'm not in this world anymore. I'm with the protagonist. And then the love for writing? So when I was 14, I was in middle school and our teacher had us make sentences using these vocabulary words from advance. And one day I looked at them and I was like, Hey, I could make a story out of this. So that's what I did. I made a story using these vocabulary words and I proceeded to write 14 other episodes, make them a book, and that's the one. So your homework turned into a book. It did. Once Upon an Enchantress. Yes. Yeah, and if you just flip through to any page, metamorph metamorphosed, uh, mesmerized, Mesmerize, you're correct. I have my old vocabulary book back in my house. I should have brought that. Well, I thought this was basically your vocabulary book because <laughs> you, you've turned it into a captivating novel. Hermione, you seem like yeah. a very determined person mm -hmm. who knows exactly what you want. What kind of environment or attitude fosters these qualities? My mom told me if you repeat a simple thing every day, that's not simple. I repeatedly wrote every day and just writing a day doesn't make you a writer. But if you write repeatedly every day, this becomes something. It becomes a book. Right. That kind of brings me to another question. You aspire to write something in every genre, right? <laughs> Over the course of your life. Yeah. So what other genres have you dabbled in so far? Have, have you tried yet to attempt other styles? Yes, mystery. I have a mystery novel. I am more anxious to try the sci-fi genre and the Western genre. Historical, anything that requires research. I wish you well in that pursuit. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You have a healthy imagination. In your opinion, what stops most kids from exploring their imagination? I would say the increasing responsibilities every youth has to shoulder as they grow up hinders them from imagining more things, new things interesting things. I mean, I have people telling me, you don't have enough experience. You can't write well, but that's total rubbish. Humans are gifted the ability to imagine and empathize with people that we don't know or things we've never experienced. You don't need to undergo a tragedy to sympathize with someone who has. That's the way humans are connected. 
Just to get a little more personal, I guess, how, how do you deal with writer's block? There's a force blocking from writing. Lack of motivation, maybe you had a bad day, maybe your boss got angry at you, maybe your teacher demanded a lot of words from you for the next assignment, mm -hmm. or maybe it's a family conflict. And you're yeah, there's a bad. lot of factors that could really affect someone's mood on any given day. Yes. Right? And it could affect their confidence. And if you don't have confidence, you don't even want to begin to do something. Yeah, the first step is hard. From zero to one, that's the hardest part. But when it's one to two, that's smooth sailing. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about kids, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. The second kid's my just as hard. My books are like my kids. Right, <laughs> your books are like your kids, right? Yeah. So what do you tell young people who think that you're an exception, right? Because after all, you're an accomplished writer by the age of 19, 19 and they think that they will never find that kind of success. I want to say, okay, every great person, authors, actors, mm -hmm. anyone great, started off just like us. Ordinary people with extraordinary dreams. Mm -hmm. Young people, silly people, innocent people who just had a dream and wanted to go for it. If they did it, why can't I? We're all human. There's no excuse to stop you from being as great as they are. What do you think stops people from pursuing their dreams or aspirations? Assuming things. This is too hard. Overthinking things is impossible. But if you really commit yourself to it, it's not that hard at all. You, you try to force yourself to do it one portion a day, like one day at a time, and then eventually you'll get there. You'll get to that peak. If you told yourself, I'll never be as successful as mm -hmm. Stephen King, Zachary Rowling, George R.R. R. Martin, if you tell yourself, no, I'll never be that successful, then boom, you're done. You're doomed. That's it. Because you just rejected yourself. Right. You just get shot it. yourself in the foot. Yeah. You can't go forward. The only way to get uh, to lose for sure is to not try at all. You didn't try, so how would it be possible for you to even achieve anything? So that's what I told myself when I was starting out. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Hermione. We're so glad that you joined us here today. Well, I'm honored to be here. Thank you. And check out Hermione's books. These are just, just two of her books here, but you just can check two. out more of them on Amazon. Um, where else? And, and where can we follow you? Where can people? Mm, Facebook. Facebook. I'm almost on Facebook. God bless you in everything that you pursue. God bless you. Thank you.